In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners like you. But the way we open the episode is with introductory conversation. This is where we talk about current events. We mention studies. Conversations get loose and fun. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. And that lasted for 37 minutes in this episode. After that is when we answered the questions. So here's what went on in today's episode. We started by talking about gyms in modern times. Right now, gyms are probably suffering from low attendance due to uh, the coronavirus fears. Uh, but people may be losing gains too. That's even that's really bad too. So we talk about working out at home and things you could do to prevent that from happening. We talk about uh, ACE inhibition or ACE inhibiting drugs. They may prove to be uh, effective treatments for the coronavirus. Crossing fingers. That reminds reminded me of a study talking about how men are weak when it comes to viruses. Apparently, our immune systems aren't that great in comparison to the ladies. Yes, right. We talked about Pepsi and how they just bought Rockstar for an astounding amount of money. Uh, we mentioned the dangers of caffeine because now it's everywhere. We talked more about at-home workouts. Then we mentioned our sponsor, Magic Spoon, and their new 12-pack mini boxes of cereal. So Magic Spoon makes high-protein, no-sugar cereal. It's like kids' cereal, like fruit-flavored, blueberry, uh, cinnamon, there's chocolate. You eat it with milk, and you've got yourself a macro-balanced, high-protein meal. We love their products, and of course, we have a discount for you because you're a Mind Pump listener. Just go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump and you'll get free shipping. By the way, there's a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like the product, just uh, return it for a full refund and make sure to use the code mind pump. Then we talked about uh, looks and how important it is to look fit if you want to be a trainer. Yeah. Uh, Justin brought up some interesting facts about the bubonic plague and HIV. We talked Naturally. about Kula, which is an organization. Uh, that is helping people around the world to, it's training them to be self-sufficient, helping them build businesses. And our sponsor, Mir, is donating money to Kula to help these people out. Now, Mir makes exceptional uh, flasks and cups and insulated uh, products. Uh, make sure you go check them out. You get 25% off with a Mind Pump discount. Just go to Mir.com. That's M-I-I-R. Dot com and the code is mind pump. Uh, I talked about the duck build dinosaur, um, and then we got into the fitness questions. Uh, the first question: This person lives in France. Gyms are going to close. Uh, how do I maintain muscle? So we talk all about strategies for working out without equipment. The next question: This person wants to know what are the best ways to stretch and strengthen the QL muscle. This is a muscle deep in the low back on the side of the spine. A lot of us injure that when we hurt our low backs. So we talk about uh, how to work on that muscle in that part of the episode. The next question, this person wants to know what habits we've introduced in the last year, good or bad. And then the final question, this person wants to know how to uh, separate body image from self-image. So they want to feel better about themselves um, and not feel so bad about the way their body looks. Um, also, this month, all month long, our newest MAPS program, MAPS Power Lift, is 50% off. So if you want to tremendously increase your squat, deadlift, and bench press, or you want to build muscle, speed up the metabolism, or you want to compete in a powerlifting competition, MAPS Powerlift is an amazing program. By the way, if you have a normally equipped home gym, barbell, dumbbells, adjustable bench, and a place to do squats, you can follow MAPS Powerlift. Of course, if you go to a gym, you can do it as well. Here's how you get the 50% off discount. Go to mapspowerlift.com, that's M-A-P-S-P-O-W-E-R-L-I-F-T.com and use the code POWER50, that's P-O-W-E-R-5-0, no space, for the discount. Power it out. Oh. All this fear stuff that's going on, uh, They some scientists are speculating that there's a type of music, in fact, it's a, it's a band that you can listen to that might help. What? Wait. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, because I think I might have read the same article. No, it's uh, um, because they're already down with the sickness. Oh, oh it's yeah, stupid, little, dude. A little, little disturbed. I saw that. <laughs> I, saw that yeah. I saw that meme already. Did you see yeah, that? Did, did you see the meme on it? With the I did. Yeah, stupid. I, I did. Terrible dad joke. No, terrible it's not, dad it's joke. It's not that terrible. 
No. I, bro, I, I think I'm most sad about the NBA being canceled right now. That's how I want to watch my. You know sports, what? Dude. I don't even care. Yeah, <laughs> what is the NBA anyway? You know, what's yeah. left? Yeah. You know, like is there? I mean, all these sports are are getting cut out. Uh, what are we left? It's gonna be like bowling, or uh, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> like darts. They're gonna be separated by plastic. Yeah, like plastic <laughs> and sheets and like sheets. I'm masks. Really, I'm really curious if we. It, so you know, our our business will be a really interesting one to watch because uh, I speculate that obviously streaming type services we've said already like Zoom is gonna is gonna blow up. I would think things like Netflix and streaming television. If everyone's gonna hunker down close their doors, lock themselves in and uh, avoid like public places, you would think the things that you would do at home that are entertainment would probably be one of the things that spike. And if we don't have baseball and basketball and things like that, sports to watch, mm. you would think people would gravitate towards podcasting and streaming type services. So, video games. Yeah, video games, I guess. Uh, so I, I wonder what will <laughs> happen <laughs> with our downloads. I mean, I wonder if we're going to see a spike in it or we'll see, because then we also have this connection with the gym, right? Yeah. We noticed that when people are on their workouts, like probably 80% of the people listen to us when they're you know doing cardio or at the gym. So if that's no longer happening, gyms are like already seeing like a huge drop. Well, in. you better keep working out. Yeah, somehow. Let me tell you something, dude. You, you okay? Fine. You might get sick. Scary. Losing your gains way worse. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to lose your gains. Way scarier. Yeah. yeah. You want to don't walk, lose the muscles. You want to walk around flabby? Yeah. No. You know, muscle is a very. Um, it's a nice insurance policy against uh, illness. It really is. Yeah. If you have more muscle and strength, and you get sick. The odds that you're going to have less severe symptoms are higher. Uh, excuse me. Yes, higher. So you're 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 more likely to do better because you have more muscle. Because you know if you're if you're bedridden, uh, muscle you end up losing muscle. But if you have a lot of muscle to lose, then you're fine. So, so I just you, hope Adam doesn't get sick because he's yeah, got nothing <laughs> left. <laughs> Dwindling in front of our eyes. It's our, oh God. You're not even sick. Yeah. Hey, I, I wonder what all the the health at every size people are saying right now. Oh. Oops. It, infectious disease guy comes out and says one of the things that's why they're scared for America so much is because of the obesity rate. But yes. you know, you, okay, so irony in that smoking just and a little obesity. bit. Okay, so I did some sleuthing earlier today. <laughs> And uh, do you guys know what that means? No, that's define a, that. That's an interesting a- adjective. It's like uh, detective work. So I I got on uh, sleuthing. Yeah. Or is that a verb? A verb. You can sleuth because so you are sleuthing. Yeah, you can sleuth around. Okay, you know what I mean. Okay, it sounds so, sexual to me. So it does, doesn't it? Yeah, like you're just, or it sounds like you're walking weird. Like that needs like fucking pick your feet up. You're sleuthing all over the room. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, I uh, I did some detective work. So I I dived in deep into the internet and uh, did what I do best. I got really paranoid and uh, (laughs) I started reading everything. So check uh, this thing out. This is very interesting. Now you said obese people, high risk for uh, severe complications from coronavirus. Um, uh, People who have high blood pressure and diabetes also at high risk uh, uh, for terrible symptoms from the coronavirus. So I started digging deeper and I said, okay, how does this virus actually work in the body? So it uh, attaches to or interacts with what are known as ACE uh, receptors in the body. And these receptors, you find quite a bit of them in your lungs, okay? When you, when you take an ACE inhibitor uh, on a chronic basis, so let's say you have high blood pressure, so you're on an ACE inhibitor, or you take chronic lo- amounts of uh, or, or, or consistent amounts of Arthritis drugs D- diminishes how many receptors you have, or what? Well, at first it does because it blocks the rece- it attaches to the receptors, right? Okay. Mm. But then, how does your body adapt? Produces more. It, it, it upregulates even more receptors. Okay. So people who are on high blood pressure medications all the time, they get sick because they have so many more of these receptors. It hits them really hard. Uh, now, there's a flip side to this. Here's something interesting. There are two pharmaceutical companies, two or three pharmaceutical companies, right now starting trials to see if their arthritis drugs will be an effective treatment. Because if you don't, let's say you don't take these drugs chronically. Now, why why arthritis? Yeah. Because the ACE receptors also okay, uh, wait, have it, to do with pain. Okay, that, oh, well, that makes sense too, because arthritis is a lack of blood flow and oxygen to to your bones, right? Isn't that the concept? Uh, something like that. That's so part that's, of it. So that's probably, it's going to enhance it's, that? I or? don't know. I don't know exactly know, but I do know that uh, popular arthritis drugs are ACE inhibiting uh, drugs. So let's say you don't take these drugs all the time, right? Mm. And then you get the virus. You could 
take these drugs at that point, then it'll reduce the severity of the symptoms. There was an Italian doctor. Now, is that for sure? Is that potentially it could do that? Well, so so, so I went Some deep, right? clinical trials. I started reading all kinds of stuff. First off, they are testing it. They're testing it at this moment to see if these drugs can actually be used Sweet. to help people. <clears throat> there was an Italian doctor who successfully took two people from the brink of death by giving them these uh, ACE-inhibiting uh, drugs. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... Maybe some light at the end of the tunnel. tunnel Why, right? it's, it's interesting mm. to me that this hasn't hit like the news. Then why is it not like all over? I would think because that, they're doing the trials right now, and, mm. and we don't know yet. And I'm sure it will. Early I mean, phases. I, yeah, of it, yeah. I mean, I, I found it. You know, I'm sure other people start to find it. And you know how the internet works. Yeah. People start to talk, and it gets all you know crazy or whatever. Um. So I don't know. Kind of cool. So here's another thing I read. So you guys have heard of the the man flu. You guys have heard of this, right? No, well, I've heard of the man cold. I've heard okay. of the bird not, flu. not the man flu. <laughs> man cold. The, so uh, women listening know exactly what I'm talking about. You get sick. You're a woman, right? You get sick. Mm. Then you accidentally give it to your boyfriend or your husband. Way worse. Yeah. Right? It's way worse. And uh, either he's a big baby or uh, there's legitimately- Or it's actually true. Or it's actually true. Yeah. Well, it, studies found that it may actually be true. We may actually not oh, be- Ooh, know. you hear that, honey? Boom. I yeah. feel so much better yeah, about that Yeah, let's now. please, let's prove this. Yeah, so, they, what they, so I'm going to read a little excerpt from the article- in a 2016 study, researchers exposed male and female human nasal cells to estrogen in a lab, uh, in a lab dish and then infected the cells with the flu virus. Mm. The investigators found that, the estro- that estrogen reduced the levels of flu virus in the cells from female donors, but not male donors. What's more, other studies have suggested that the male hormone testosterone may lower the body's immune response to flu viruses. So the, the, the hormone that makes us as awesome as we are also could be making us... Wow. Yeah, weaker. <laughs> no, when it comes we to need, we illnesses. need a little more estrogen. Yeah. So can you imagine system. that the whole world fucking just thing gets all crazy. All, yeah, the, yeah. all the guys die except for me and Justin. <laughs> yeah. And we have to repopulate. <laughs> I'm the world. definitely going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you, you see what? Did you guys see when I was uh, when we went to the airport? I think Eli caught this on film. I'm sure he's going to post it at one point when we were all uh, getting ready to fly off uh, to Arnold and um, my you know fruit and energy drink uh, for my flight or whatever that I bought. The Coca Cola fruit, yeah, yeah. Then the, my gummy bear fruit snacks. candy, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> real, real healthy. Decisions. There was fruit. It, it was real fruit in there. Though. That's right. That's it's right. That's right. Back. No, but I tried. I tried that new uh, Coke energy drink, and so uh, what made me think about that was uh, the article that just got shared in our forum. Too. Now, was it good? Did it taste good? Was it? All yeah, no, I was really. I like the taste of Coke, right? So it just t- it tastes like Coke, but it's just it reminded me of like Jolt when we were kids, right? Mm. When Jolt had like sixty grams of. Isn't that funny? When 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 we were kids. The, the the crazy energy drink that if nobody was looking and you were a kid you could buy and freak out had like 50 or 60 milligrams yeah, of caffeine yeah, that's yeah. nothing it's like all sugar yeah, yeah I think they ramped this that's one nothing. up to like 160 or 200 so I can't remember what I read on the bottle I think it was 120 is that what it was somewhere mm-hmm. I knew it was obviously I knew it was significantly more than what Jolt was back mm-hmm. when we were kids but it tastes like that very similar to that just more caffeine in it I liked it I mean it tastes good uh, but then I just saw the article that just got posted on our forum that Pepsi buys uh, Rockstar for three point eight billion dollars. Wow! Was it yeah. Pepsi or Coke? It was Pepsi. Pepsi. Oh, it was Pepsi. Yeah, yeah. yeah Pepsi. Coke is making their own. Yeah, Coke is making oh, their right. own. Pe- which so interesting, right? So like, what you know? What do you do when you're you're a massive company like Pepsi or Coke? Coke decides, oh, we'll make our own and see yeah. what we can do. And then Pepsi says, now nah, we'll just go gra- grab yeah, a we'll brand. We'll just go buy one. Right. I think that's really interesting. It is, and you know what's interest what's what's really interesting to me is that the energy drink market was non-existent. Not that long ago. I just like the pre-workout yep. market, same thing. It did not exist at all. Uh-uh. And uh, coffee was not consumed by anybody under the age of 40. Yeah, coffee started it all. Yeah, that, that became the thing. Like all these like variations of coffee. Remember, it was just coffee. You know, like not too long ago, it's like you just, you pour it, it's black, it's coffee. You know, sometimes yeah. cigarettes go with it, whatever. Yeah. You know, you could you could actually make a product today and call it that, just coffee. It's just People coffee, like, oh, asshole. What yeah. is this? Yeah, but, that's such a good point, yeah. right? Yeah. Hold your stupid order. Only you know? only your teachers with bad breath and people <laughs> yeah. had to drink coffee. Remember that everybody had stained yellow teeth and they'd like spit when they talk, and it was just disgusting. It wasn't a cool drink. No. It was a it was actually a gross drink that old people drank and it gave you bad breath and it wasn't cool 
Right. Like you didn't go get coffee with anybody, and if you did, yeah. you were old. The, the yeah. irony, I'm not going to study. You the know, irony coffee. of it to me is that we didn't see the writing on the wall early enough. I mean, it's a drug, right? There's caffeine in it. Yeah. So how did we? Well, not, they just did cocaine back what, in those days. Yeah, maybe that's what yeah. it was. Coffee. Yeah. That's what the kids were doing. <laughs> coffee and cocaine was a bigger deal back then. Yeah. Yeah. It was I all did, Miami viced out. You yeah. Know? yeah. No, but nobody, nobody had it. Nobody drank it. Energy drinks were non-existent. Well, I feel like that's the thing that no one's talking about, though, is what's happened. Right. All, all we're seeing is just the, the progression of what happens when you. You go from not drinking coffee to drinking coffee to drinking two cups of coffee to drinking three cups of coffee to drinking yeah. four cups of coffee. Now it's like, well, fuck, Rockstar allows me to have one Rockstar, which is really like four or five yeah. cups of coffee. It's a different flavor from coffee, yeah. so I can have all of them. Yeah, 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 right. Or I can have my coffee in the morning, and then I move on to my Rockstar, right? So, yeah, it's uh, and all of it is just because we keep upping the dose of caffeine that we have, where... <laughs> You'd probably save a lot of money if you just learn to wing yourself off for a week and then go right back. Well, on. it's going to be interesting. Well, I mean, you can see the the amount of hospitalizations due to caffeine. By the way, caffeine causes is there really a lot? A lot, dude. Yeah. I didn't know it's that. Terrible. Oh for my kids. god. Oh my god. Caffeine causes. Maybe Doug can find this uh, annual hospitalization due to caffeine. It's a ton. Really? Yeah. Yes. I did not know that. Oh yeah, dude. Caffeine kills people too every year. Yeah. Every single year. It more, than, more than Corona? Uh, Definitely yeah. more than sharks. Definitely more than Corona in America yeah. right now. Uh, not that many people have died of Corona, let's be honest, right now. Yeah. I don't know what that's going to look like in the future, but as of yesterday, more people died you know, slipping in the shower than they died of Corona. Right, right. Now, I'm sure that will change. Right. But uh, who knows? That's what they project, right? They project it to be like you know, 30 times that or something. Yeah, who crazy, knows? Right? What does that say, Doug? I can't read that. 92 reported deaths from caffeine in 2018. See? 92 people died from caffeine wow. in 2018. Now, obviously, you probably have a pre-existing heart condition, and then you like yeah. overdo the caffeine. Is That's got to be the, probably, the recipe for that, Probably, right? or somebody you know, had, had too much. There was one kid that bought caffeine powder. Yes, that, I remember this case. Did you hear about this? Yep. Uh -huh. no. So, okay, so this kid bought caffeine. You used to be able to buy this. You can't buy it anymore. It was just straight caffeine powder. So, powder. so if you wanted to, you could take it and mix it into a drink. And in, in, in caffeine it yourself or whatever. You, you could buy it like on Amazon. Well, so no this, way. That'd be cool. Dude, so this kid no. fucked up, right? So no. he he miscalculated because people sometimes confuse milligrams for grams. Okay, so. Whoa. So one gram is a thousand milligrams. Oh, God. Okay. What did he do? Like so 10 he, grams or something? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. No way. Yeah, and he killed, he died. Really? It was something. It was something silly like that. Like you took thousands of milligrams. Is now that, you had like a heart attack, or yep. Yeah, you so can't. You good. can't get it in its powdered form like that anymore. No, <laughs> because of that. Yeah, I don't think so. And they, the, I think this is the same time where they came out with the powdered alcohol, and then they realized real quickly that's a bad idea too. <laughs> powdered alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Just, people... just mix your own at home. Yeah. What can we powder? I'm trying to think right now. What are some things we can powder to make some money? Well, everything we have is powdered already. Powdered wheat, creatine, and yeah. stuff like that. That's yeah. all we care about. Jeez. What else are you gonna do? Now, do you guys when you guys Guys go off caffeine DNA. and then go back on it. And Justin doesn't go off caffeine, huh? Justin he did. He did. He did I like did two weeks for ago. Like a week, you maybe. Mean, he, re he reduced it. Is yeah, it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Actually, it's, you're right. <laughs> I got to be fair. He went down <laughs> to one it was cup, one cup uh, for a week, and that was hard. Yeah, that was too hard. Did you, was it a big cup? Uh, it, I mean, it was reasonable size. It was a regular cup. It wasn't mm. like I was doing like a double gulp, you know, from Seven Eleven. Didn't or you say you had like headaches and, and nausea? Yeah, and yeah I, was, I was suffering, dude. <laughs> I was suffering. It's real, dude. I got the sweats, dude. I, oh, I was, I was dying. You were like the, like, like the when people go into rehab, and they have to go. <laughs> it's like, come on, man, you can do it. You yeah. know, I was like pumping myself up. I just up. need some more heroin. Yeah. No. So you guys ever go off or cut down, and then you go back on, right? And you get that amazing feel again. Right. Do you have any weird? Because I do, so I want to make sure that uh, maybe you guys do. Do you have any weird uh, caffeine effects? That you guys get aside from the energy and feeling good and all that stuff. No, what you get? What do you mean your, weird? What oh, you yeah, horny? something what? different. <laughs> something just horny. different. He gets horny when the wind blows, dude. I know he connects yeah. everything to that. Seriously, dude, it makes me horny, <laughs> bro. I knew it. Why yeah. did I mean, like? Of course. No, I, I don't what do you mean? I, of course. Because <laughs> you, you attribute bro, everything, everything to doing that. Everything no, I don't. Horny, dude. Yes, you do. No, bro. I don't. Protein shakes don't make me horny. <laughs> yeah, the Cre one one thing. Yeah. Cre creatine does sometimes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Every time we try something new. No, have, just, have you ever smelled fresh cut grass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me want weird effects. Makes me want to fuck all the time. Oh my god. No stimulants can do that to people. I'm not the only one. Yeah. I swear to God. Landscaping is. Hot. No, st stimulants can do that because they, they elevate dopamine. And yeah, yeah, I think it just makes you feel like you're 17 again. It just puts you back in that mindset because you got the energy like a 17. You're just pumped up, dude. Yeah, that's no, all dude, I'm serious. I get yeah. like, a, I get a, a, a slight, but this is only when I go off 
and then go back on. When I use it all like super regularly, then I lose that effect. It makes wow. me. I just it's very clear difference, strong. right? It's uh, when I'm consistently drinking co- coffee or caffeine, right on a, on a very regular basis, I feel uh, normal. I don't like, it just <laughs> Doesn't that suck, right? And then yeah. when I go off of it and then come back on, I remember like, oh, this is what this feels like when I haven't had it in a long time, and it actually I can feel the energy surge immediately from it. So mm-hmm. yeah, that I mean that to me is the the big difference. It's it very well we. Weed's a little bit different too. Weed, you know, if I smoke weed right now and I'm consistent about it, which I have been lately, it's kind of like it just relaxes, chills me out. Where if I take a week or two off of it and then go back on, I get like high, you know, mm. like back. It reminds me of the very first experience of trying it where I'm like goofy mm. and like. Now, does know. weed make you horny? It can, depends yeah, on the same. strain. All right, me too. It, Good. It, it yeah, does. yeah. It depends on the strain. It, it works for me. Yeah. yeah. So there's one strain in particular that I, I have, it's hard to find here in California. I haven't found it in a while. And when I do, I, I'll buy it. Green Crack is the name of it. Unfortunate name. Yeah. Boy, that's an aphrodisiac. Yeah, dream Queen. That Dream Queen for you? No, that's what Green Crack is. They've called it Dream Queen to change the name because it's inappropriate. Oh, I don't mm-hmm. know that. Mm-hmm. So, so if I find Dream Queen? Yeah, most places, especially now because we're so woke. Uh, if you were to go yeah. into it, yeah, it's been green crack. I don't for, like my drug being named after another drug. Yeah, no, that's exactly yeah, what it is. It was like, oh my God. Well, when the, when the dispensaries were coming on the scene and, you know, you had a lot of these old school strains that have been around forever, like green crack, and they're trying to legit, uh, legitimize, uh, you know, uh, medicinal cannabis. They're like, okay, well, one of the things we have to do is like, you know, start changing the names of these things like Green Crack, Fruity Pebbles. Like people are not going to fucking take That's it seriously. True. So a lot of dispensaries just kind of flop, flip the name and a lot of people followed suit behind. So if you ever see Dream Queen, it's Green Crack. Dream Queen's better, but not that much. Dude. Huh? It still sounds like a we. You know what I mean? Yeah, I still guess. doesn't sound professional. I guess you know whatever. Yeah, I, I, I think it's funny. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think all the names are great. Yeah. You know. So anyway, I want to make a a prediction uh, because of the hysteria and stuff that's going on. Um, at home workouts are gonna, I think, gonna take off. I think a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and here's why. I think a lot of people think if we don't, if we as people stop going to the gym, here's that less people are gonna work out now because they're not going to the gym. But I'm going to counter that and say this. If you're at home and you're self-quarantining a little bit, you're not really going anywhere, not going to restaurants, at some point you're going to start to realize that I need to, I need to move and exercise, otherwise I'm going to go crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's interesting because you know we've been trying to plant the seed in terms of like, hey, maybe not group training. You know, <laughs> hey, maybe you should think about doing your own thing. Like, like I'm sorry, but we uh, <laughs> we predicted it. Yeah, we had the we had the foresight, uh, you know, to handle this. You know, we got maps anywhere. We got a lot of things. <laughs> you know, uh, wow, prepare you for this uh, inevitable isolation. I didn't think about that. I wonder how like uh, the orange theories and F45 oh, class are going to be affected. I guarantee. You because I would think those will be affected far worse than even like a big gym. Like going to like a 24-hour fitness, 50,000 square feet, it's like open like that. Imagine how how bad like a, a Orange Theory or F45 where they stick you in a 1,000 square foot building with 30 to 50 people that are sweating and running and breathing all over each other. Right. Screwed. Wow. So now we have a window, right? You can do it the right way. Yeah. yeah, America, <laughs> right? Yeah. We could figure this out. Yeah. Number we need one to follow reason, a plan. Yeah. Number one reason why group classes suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, what about like, what about deli- like I think uh, things that will do well uh, right now? Delivery like, services. Yeah, delivery services. So I think brand- I thought of that too, but then I wonder if people are afraid of the dude of the or the preparing yeah. it and then the guy delivering it. No, they all come like in a box, right? So you would just yeah. wipe it down before you open it up, right? Mm-hmm. When you do that, I that's, mean, that's that's what you. Yeah. That's unless you're I mean, eating your fries. That you you got to think that's a lot safer. Safer than going in. Well, okay, that type of delivery service, I don't know. Like, I'm thinking more things like our brands, like Butcher Box, Magic Spoon, oh, these guys that are shipping absolutely. like things that like that that come in. I I can imagine Magic Spoon. I'm sure would crush because obviously, what's well, a good product anyway, right? It's high protein cereal, but it's in a box, right? So it's clean. It's in a box. Sterile. It's in a box. Yes, it's in right. a box. It's in a box. Was in a box. Didn't they just come out with a uh, the little small? Yeah, little mini pack, dude. You guys remember these? It was like a 12 pack. Well, it used to be like Fruit Loops, you know, and then you had. Lucky Charms, and you had like Cocoa Pebbles and all that, and that, so they basically did like a very similar thing with all of their flavors. It's for Pretty people awesome. with commitment issues, I used yeah. to get so. I, my mom, I used to piss her off or so people bad. Like variety, yeah, exactly. You know what I, mean? I used to get her so mad because when we go to the grocery store, I wanted the variety box more than anything. Oh, I did really? not want. Yeah, I wanted the variety box because 
It was fun. Every day yeah. you got a new one, except Apple for- Apple Smacks, and they had like Frosted Flakes. Oh, you know there. what else I like about Apple Smacks? Mm. The name, it's a great way to trick your siblings into hitting them. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys yeah. want some smacks? Yeah, right. I do. That in the capital of Thailand. <laughs> well, <it's laughs> Bangkok. Bangkok. Boom. The variety right the pack is actually ten dollars cheaper than the normal box too, which is cool. So you save a little bit of money and you get a chance to try it out. So, so people how many how many come in the circle? Twelve. It's a twelve variety pack for twenty nine bucks. Oh wow! Yeah. And is each box like two servings or something like that? Um, I, I mean, I it's like it's a, a serving. Si- a I think box. it's a yeah, a single serving, like a big bowl. So you could try. Each. Yeah, exactly. So everybody could try out. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now the old school variety packs of the you know the, the sugary series or whatever. They always threw in um, the one cereal that I don't understand why they throw it in there. It was uh, Raisin... Uh, raisin raisin Bran? Bran? Yeah, two scoops of Raisin. Ugh. I like Raisin uh, Bran. That's, yeah. You didn't, didn't like Raisin Bran? What are you... Yeah, yeah. but like if you're, As a kid, if, if you're I doing did. sugar cereals, that's not your go-to. What the hell, dude? Yeah. I mean, the flakes... I, raisins I, are... On, and anything are terrible. The flake, the flakes had sugar all over it, dude. They were not. Uh, it was not like yeah. Healthy. No, I know. Raisin it's, Bran was not healthy cereal. So what did sure. you do with the raisins? I I like the raisins in there. You didn't like that? No, dude. Oh, I did, did you like, like raisin chip two cookie scoops scoops? and Kellogg's no. Bran? Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, like so each box is. Uh, 110 calories. 110 cal. Can you read all those macros? Oh, what's my eyesight going bad again? Oh well, no, that's Doug, tiny. Doug. Doug's got it hell small. Yeah, yeah. you got it. <laughs> hey Doug, can you get it bigger? Yeah, because yeah. I, I want to read the uh, the macros, or maybe you can read them. All I got these get some caffeine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So total fat six grams, uh, carbohydrates eight grams. No sugar. No. Uh, let's see, zero sugars, and twelve grams of protein. Wow, and that's one little box. Throw in some milk, and you got yourself a high protein, uh, yum yum time. Yum yums. <laughs> well, yeah, a little snack. Yeah, yeah. that's it. I always I, use, it. I always used two of those variety packs when I was a kid making a bowl. You never used one. Did you oh. ever mix cereals? Ooh, that's that's alchemy. No, you do that with your Slurpees, not with your cereal. <laughs> you mix Slurpees too? Of course you. Do. Everyone, yeah, you do. Every kid makes. You know, Slurpees. my favorite one was they had like a Coca Cola Slurp, and then they had cherry, and I'd do both those. Yeah, that's boom. It's called think- Cherry Coke. I think you're it's not, a, it brilliant. is, but you're not brilliant, was, Justin. They've already invented I, I, that. <laughs> listen, this is before Cherry Coke. I was so. gonna say, to Justin's defense, that might have been how Cherry Coke was I think invented. That's how it started. Just, so it was yeah. actually they were following my lead. Justin yeah. invented it. Yeah, yeah. Try mixing Coke I don't and Sprite. Get paid for how it. about that? Yeah, that's right. Coke and Sprite. Blah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Fuck out of here. That's what I did. <laughs> no, it was absolutely terrible. You would be that guy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. dude, I got a, a a message from somebody yesterday, and it's a message I get every once in a while. Um, and I hate answering it because the truth is unfortunate, but you guys ever get, uh, somebody who asks you how much does it matter or does it matter if I want to be a trainer to, uh, that I need to look fit? Do you guys ever get that question? Of course. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I hate answering that because unfortunately it does matter. It's not everything, but it does make a, a difference. It Especially also shows you look- you're a better closer if you're fat. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, so that's all. I'm just gonna put that. That's, that's what makes you the best closer. Yeah, yeah. I can still close you on a thirty pack, no problem. Yeah. No, we're we're in a we're in a superficial industry. Let's be honest. Yeah. I mean, and uh, the early traction of Mind Pump. I mean, that was uh, I knew this uh, well before the idea of even Mind Pump and all of us getting together. I knew when I was going to start to try and build something virtually and online. Okay. I'm going to have to present myself as like super jacked just to get the attention for people then to listen to me. For and then the, the value is the information. Right. And then, yeah. and then be able to present the information. It's just unfortunate for that. That doesn't mean that, you know, you can't train clients and, and, and impact a life at a time. And then they go and share with their friends and organically grow over months and years of, of training people. Like, I think you can build a business off of being a really phenomenal trainer who's just very informed and really good with communication and you can help people. And even if your physique isn't all the way there, but uh, I mean, to really scale and grow uh, rapidly, I just think it, it unfortunately matters because we're in a superficial uh, world right it, now. It, it does matter. but the, space. But the thing that I like to tell people is it matters, but it doesn't matter if you're shredded or you just look kind of average fit. Yeah. Like you don't have to be a, a bodybuilder. In fact, if you look ultra shredded, sometimes that can turn people off. Mm-hmm. Um, just look like a regular, you know, fit look, person. Yeah, I think just I think that's a great point. Like you don't have to be jacked, right? No. Uh, I think jacked, if being jacked, you get kind of the respect of everybody. But I think to uh, as far as like people uh, respect what you're capable of doing, but I think the average consumer that's buying personal training, it's less of the, you know, twenty year old kid who wants to look jacked like you. It's more of the you know middle aged person who wants to lose weight. And I think you just have to be in a place where 
where they potentially would like to be or go. If you're very few people, it's just like yeah. hiring the financial advisor who's broke. Like right. that, that never you made sense. That. that never made sense to me either. The guys that get dentist into, with like you know fucked up teeth. Yeah, <laughs> you know all the the people that get into the like advising financially and they're still living with their mom and they're like trying to start this financial uh, advising business. Bitcoin, and like, put it all yeah. in Bitcoin. Yeah, you're like, well, you know, I kind of want to get advice from somebody who's at least at a level higher than where I'm currently at. I feel fitness is the same way too. Someone who's going to hire. Somebody who's still on their own journey, uh, it's it's less likely. Yeah, I think it's definitely it's part of the the thing. You have to live the brand, you know, especially for the average consumer and person coming in the gym. But I think the only people that can really get away with it are like strength coaches, you know, like where they're in there with athletes, <laughs> yeah. they fucking let themselves go. It does not matter because they know the the technique to like a level that, you know, you have to have that at least or, or like be super strong still or, or like have like unreal, you know, coaching cues. Yeah, but I know who you're alluding to right now. And those guys have been, they, they've been around for they, a long exactly, time. Exactly. They, they built credibility on their knowledge for decades of information, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's not like... Like they didn't start off as the beer belly guy trying to talk about. Yeah, like, it. like Arnold could probably. I mean, Ar people right. would hire Arnold regardless of what he looked like nowadays. Exactly you know, because of his because of his, his reputation. Right. But it, what it does is it displays integrity. Really, it's 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 not so much people look at you and think you look awesome and want to hire you. It's more so if you look very unhealthy mm -hmm. that that looks like lack of integrity because as a trainer, a lot of your job is telling your client what to do. <laughs> You're telling them to change behaviors and, you know, it's like you guys ever, you know, it's like, it's like listening to a preacher, you know, and they're preaching to you about a virtuous life. And then you find out that they cheated on their wife or they stole money or whatever. And you just don't want to listen to them. You don't want to hear what they have to say because they, they lack integrity. Yeah. Yeah. I had a, years ago, you know, managing big box gyms, you're constantly looking for new staff because uh, if you, if you have somebody that's good on your team, Typically, the company will take them and make them a manager, so you need to fill that spot or whatever. So it's always smart to constantly try to fill your club with new people. So I was always on the lookout, and uh, I was at a, a, a Foot Locker buying a pair of shoes, and the guy came over and was just one of the best, most engaging salespeople I'd ever met. He was so great talking to me. We had a great conversation. Next thing you know, he asked me what I do, and I said, oh, I manage a gym. And he goes, oh, he goes, I just lost... 75 pounds and he shows me this driver's license where he was like way heavier and so i recruited him now he wasn't at this point he still had some weight to lose he wasn't obese he still had some weight to lose but because he had such an amazing story and he was so engaging i hired him as a salesperson so he wasn't a trainer but he did sell memberships and he did very well so yeah. i have a, a, this a similar story it was a, a lady that i hired that this was during this time too where i was like okay um, I'm going to stop looking for, I had had a lot of trainers that failed that had, you know, multiple national certifications or degrees or looked super jacked. And like, that also wasn't a great strategy just looking for that either. So I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm just going to ignore what these potential leads look like. And the mm -hmm. next like character that, that I think has just got the right characteristics as far as being outgoing and personable and can communicate well, good energy, like and so I found this girl that, you know, she, and she had a, like, I think she had lost like 50 or 60 pounds, but still had a long ways to go. Uh, definitely out of, sh still out of shape, uh, but great energy, all these things. I thought, okay, this is going to be a great time for me or a great person for me to try this on. Oh my God, that was on me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, it just didn't work out. I mean, uh, there, there be now a, was she a trainer? She was a trainer. Oh, see, I hired a sales guy. Right. Yeah. So yeah, as a trainer, you, you know, might not be able to get away with it. You know, and there was there was like a handful of clients that really loved her, right? So that you know appreciated that that were they were really insecure with their weight. They felt like they can identify with her, but she only attracted that very small right. niche client. That client that was in the almost mm -hmm. exact same situation that she was, fifty pounds heavier. And they really they loved her, but that small yeah, they can relate. percentage wasn't enough for her to sustain her business. And eventually, I had to let her go because she just couldn't survive mm. uh, in the club. And you know, so I don't know. There's there's there is some I think some people that can make it work, uh, but I've definitely tried that experiment to see if like okay, if you have all the other attributes, could you be a really successful trainer? Um, and at the end of the day, that's, I think that's what everybody would say at the end is like, man, I just, I feel like she hasn't got all the way to where I want to be. And so I want, I want somebody who's already experienced that and can speak to that. 
And so, yeah, no, and if you're going to get in this space, you have to understand that, that you're going to probably it's definitely have, a part of it. Right. Dude, did you guys know that 10% of a European population is immune to HIV? What? Yeah. Why? At the, apparently, it's because of the bubonic plague. What really? Yeah, so left over because they had the plague, right? Wiped out pretty much like oh, what is it like 80 90 percent of the population? It, uh, I don't Something know, crazy. Was, I think it was one third. Okay, I just, I just, you know, really <laughs> exaggerated <laughs> yeah. there, <laughs> but maybe <laughs> just throwing numbers out of my maybe ass. I'm wrong, yeah, that's a lot still. So, because everybody got the plague, they built up a random, yeah, only the strong through. survived. And they got a random immunity to HIV. But yeah, to I didn't even know people had immunity to, to HIV. I thought it was pretty contagious you, like to everybody. Yeah, they found people who have antibodies. What does that say, Doug? How many? Wiped out 30 to 50% of Europe's population. Okay. It's in between. 50, okay. Yeah, 50 is a lot, man. I mean, it's a lot. Damn. It wasn't quite as many as I said. Could you imagine that? Looking around, half. Yeah. Gone. Just, Later. Wow. Like, like Bill Burr said, did you see Bill Burr's post yesterday? No. All the, uh, no, par- all the parking spaces that are open in LA right now. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Dude, I fucking love that guy. What a dick. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I love those random facts. Do you have any more? Yeah. Uh, you let's do? See. Well, yeah, I, I do, but actually, I was only the prepared dance, for that monkey, one. Dance, monkey, dance. It's like Sal. That was really good. Give, give yeah. me another one. Yeah, 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 give yeah, me yeah. another one. Hey, you know what else makes me horny? <laughs> <laughs> random facts. Random oh. facts. Right. Keep them coming. Let's they see. They keep me coming. Uh, Sorry. Okay, here's one. I'm just going to read this one for you. As a child, Mason McDeed cried constantly from severe uh, cerebral palsy issues. His father failed to co- uh, comfort him with classical and new age music. So he was trying to comfort him with like new age music. But then he tried Metallica. And the child stopped crying and fell asleep. Now, in his 20s, unable to speak, Mason's attended like 100 plus surgeries and attended 450 metal concerts. Boom. Metal. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> metal heals. Metal. I, you guys used to make fun of me because like it, it calms me down with this heavy music, but I, I was like, wow, there's something to that. I don't know how the hell it could calm someone down. Do you think maybe you have several palsy? We don't know. Se- about se- it? Se- I, <laughs> Would you call it several? <laughs> yes. Did I say several? You got, oh, no, he no, said no, several. Oh, yeah, cerebral. You got more than one. Cerebral. Yeah. You got several of them. Yeah. <laughs> What's this note about this duck-billed dinosaur? Is that who's that, Justin? No, I, it wasn't not me. Someone's gonna bring something no. about a duck-billed dinosaur. I mean, that's, that's why the hell? Is that, why that's, is there a note about that? <laughs> that's one hundred percent not me. I thought yeah. it was you, Sal. Was it me? Yeah, it was definitely you. Oh man, I need oh, my, my, my memory's going. No, that's, no. That's, I was I was gonna, gonna talk. I was gonna bring up Mir and our partners and what they're doing right now. It's pretty cool to see uh, the they're always giving back and they recently are doing this. It's I think what's it called Kula, Doug? What's the what's the uh, yeah? It's called Kula. So they're doing this where they go into it's Rwanda where they're in right now. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So they they went into Rwanda I think this last year and they're doing this program called Kula where they're basically helping, and I, I believe it's geared towards uh, women and developing them as as like business leaders in their in part their, of it is some community. some of the other parts I think are, are both. Oh really? Yeah. And and from what I saw, it's a so there's it's a different approach to helping people in need. Their approach is to help them build businesses, to train them, to teach them skills, uh, to make them self-sufficient. And so which, that's a large part of what they do. Which is really cool. Remember when we talked to, um, what's our friend that goes over and teaches them how to build the wells for water? I cannot think. Oh, Justin Wren. Thank yeah, you. Justin Wren. You're so and, sharp right now, Justin. I know, I know right? I'm on it. Uh, you know, and one of the things that I, I think is interesting is that we think sometimes just sending people over free stuff, free food or free clothes... We think that we're really helping, but mm-hmm. when you think of a nation like that, you potentially put somebody out of business who is providing that service for that country. Here, we, here, Eric in America is, and we think, oh, you know, let's donate this, and we mm-hmm. send over all these things to a nation, thinking that we're really truly now helping. you're devaluing a lot of their farming and their food that they're already producing. Well, that actually happened. Yeah, yeah. That, that actually happened with uh, was it? I forgot what the name. Remember that big concert that happened in the '80s. Uh, Michael Jackson, feed the world, something yeah. like that, and it was to pr- to, to provide food uh, in, in a part of Africa. I forgot what it was. Yeah, and they got tons and tons of aid, tons and tons of food, destroyed their own local market. So the farmers who were producing rice and stuff got destroyed because people are getting free food, right? And because they did this for a couple generations, people forgot the skills of farming and whatever, and they became completely dependent 
on uh, you know on four and eight. So that's why I love something like this, like uh, what Mir is doing, just because uh, obviously they they understand that and they've thought about that. So instead of just like donating money directly to them or providing some free food or water service or something like that, it's like okay, we're going to go in, help them develop businesses, right, and help teach them, educate them to grow and, and create their own their own products, their own business within the within their their uh, their country, their culture. And that to me is like, I mean, that's how you really affect change long term for a place like that versus just giving something real quick. So, no, yeah, it's really it's awesome work. Yeah. Okay. Now I remember what it was about the duck bill dinosaur. It was me. <laughs> it oh was. God, here we go. <laughs> such an asshole. You know, what a jerk. <laughs> what? I told you guys my memory's okay. just random. We'll just sit here, you so, know, watch the, the paint peel. So, scientists uh, found, they'd made an announcement that they discovered DNA in a 75 million year old baby duck bill dinosaur. Uh, so they actually found intact DNA, just like Jurassic Park, Dude. in a 75 million year old dinosaur. Didn't someone? Wasn't there like fo- photos of this going around Instagram for a while there? Well, uh, yeah, Google this. I I saw this. This was going posted. That no wonder you put the, this was on your notes. I saw this like a week ago. Yeah, uh, people were were sharing like a little a little version of it. You didn't see it? No, I didn't. Yeah. Meanwhile, I want to find out what the hell's going on with the uh, clone mammoths. Like, what? are we there yet? Do we have a mammoth? Oh, I don't know. When Remember do that? that initiative? They're doing that. All these scientists out yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. To... They were going to clone them. I, it's, why are we doing this crazy shit? Because we can. Yeah, yeah dude. Exactly. Yeah. What do you, what's the purpose of that? You're yeah. going to have a, a woolly ma- Maybe woolly mammoths ex- went extinct because they were fucking killers. Like for a reason? Yeah, and we yeah. took them out. You know, and you're going to bring them back? Our first question is from Phoebe's Cray K. I live in France and gyms may be forced to close due to the coronavirus. What are some tips to maintain muscle during this period of time? This is uh, uh, going to be much more of a common question, I, I think, because yeah. of because of this this problem. Um, well, obviously, if you have home gym equipment, you're totally fine, right? You can work out at home. You could, if you have a barbell, dumbbells, adjustable bench, you're pretty much set. You could do almost any exercise uh, and train every body part with that type of base equipment. But let's say you don't. Let's say you don't have any equipment whatsoever. Um, what are some good, I guess, body weight, you know, no gym required uh, type of exercise and workouts? Now, we created a program specifically uh, around this um, called Maps Anywhere. So it's a, it's a full workout program that doesn't need or require equipment. It just requires bands and your body weight. Um, there's a couple things you could do to make body weight exercises more challenging because my the thing for me with body weight exercises, like a like a body weight squat sometimes is uh, it gets too easy. Like how many how many of these do I need to do before you know I start to feel these or whatever because I don't have you know 200 or 300 pounds on my back. Um, just move to one leg, you know single uh, you know one limb type movements like uh, single leg squats or pistol squats. One arm push-ups, um, very effective exercises, uh, lots of resistance, and you can get great workouts with some of these. Also, this is a great time to do uh, tempo and uh, isolation exercises too, or isometric mm-hmm. exercises. Isometric, yeah, yes. isometric and and tempo uh, stuff is great. Like, man, I, I I can take somebody and do ten body weight squats and make it extremely intense. Slow. Oh yeah, slow it down. Do an isometric hold at the bottom of it, and uh, yeah, watch you get. And I mean. Of course, a, a, another great option is if you can do a single leg squat, but that's that's normally a really big jump, right? A lot of people you uh, could you could assist. I guess you could hold on to something while yeah, doing it, right? but st- even then, still really hard for a lot of people, mobility wise, strength wise, to make the jump from okay, body weight squats are really easy for me. Uh, let me go to a single leg pistol. Like mm-hmm. even with the assistance, it's it's tip it's it's typically pretty challenging for most people. So I my first way to progress body weight squats is just simply slowing down the tempo and doing isometric holds at the bottom and you can make uh those really really challenging so and then if you have the the ankle mobility and hip mobility to do and strength to do a single leg squat i think that's a, a, a excellent advice but. i think to rubber bands uh now that we have uh different versions like they they have some now that are really uh you know applied a, a lot of like thickness to it so it's got like more weight resistance um that that you can really like challenge yourself with like before it used to be like if i worked out with bands it was basically like i mean this is it's pretty light. It, was, it wasn't any much better than like working out with just your body weight, but I think there's a lot more options now uh, with these these thick bands that you can really get 
uh, some serious uh, resistance that that you know you can work against and, and do pretty much just about every exercise you can think of um, as long as you have something to wrap it around and uh, like our I know is it rubber bandits we have has handles for these as well as too so you can still do like all kinds of stuff dude seriously you could do you know and I did this years ago uh, traveled to southern Italy with my with my family and the small town that we were staying in they have a gym that just so happened to be closed for the entire month of, uh, that we were there. So I had no gym to go to unless I went to the next town, but I didn't have a car. So all I had access to was a pull-up bar, uh, resistance bands, and my body. And I had phenomenal workouts. Obviously, with the pull-up bar, you can do all you, one of the best back exercises known to man, which is pull-ups. Um, you could do all kinds of pressing exercises for the upper body by elevating your feet, which increases the resistance. You could balance with your feet up against the wall if you want to do upside down push-ups. Those can tend to be very difficult. And then of course you can use bands, but here's something else that I found. Because of the lack of high resistance for a lot of exercises, uh, frequency become became more important. So it, l normally when I'd go to a gym, for example, I'd hit full body maybe three days a week with heavy weights. But now let's say I'm at home, I don't have access to heavy weights. Well, now uh, increase the frequency. So instead of doing three days a week, do six days a week. Six days a week, I'm training the whole body with a 30 to 45 minute body weight band based workout. And you'll actually get um, some, some pretty damn good results. In fact, what you may actually notice is if you switch out of the gym and do that for, let's say, two or three months or even one month and then go back to the gym, you may actually find that you have better stability better fitness. It's a new novel stimulus. This may this may be an opportunity for you to change up your workout so much that it gets your body uh, to actually respond. And in, in, at the very least, it'll prevent uh, lots of fitness loss and muscle loss and, and that kind of stuff. So frequency becomes more important when you don't have the, the weight that will create the tension that you want. Next question is from Johnny Trollo. What are some of the best ways to stretch and strengthen the quadratus lumborum? Justin, didn't you do a, a YouTube series on QL stuff? I thought you did way back when. I might have, yeah. I might have. I've, I've definitely had, you know, vested interest in it because of straining it before and like having issues uh, rehabbing, you know, the QL. And this is this is a very common injury that people face, especially when they start deadlifting and uh, they get a little bit of asymmetry like in, in shifting. And so... Um, I've, I've found, uh, you know, a few things too, like, a I think we call it like a half moon stretch, but basically I'm like grabbing, um, I'm, I'm grabbing a, a post and then I'm, I'm crossing my leg behind me and kind of leaning my hips into it. So I'm actually all of my direction with this stretch is going out to the side and it really helps to then, uh, you what know, program did we include that in? That's, that's in, in anywhere, I believe in yeah. prime. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And so both, of both, both of those. So, so the QL is a muscle in in the in, deep in the in the body, it's kind of near the low back, and when you do a side bend, you're activating it, right? So it's kind of flexing the body at the side. It's a very very strong stabilizer. Oftentimes, when people pull a, a muscle in their back when they're deadlifting, it's not uncommon for it to be this muscle right here, the QL. Yeah. Um, so it is an important one to stretch and to strengthen. One of the best ways to strengthen the QL is through heavy stabilization type exercises. So you could walk mm -hmm. with like one dumbbell in one hand called and a suitcase. Anti-rotation type exercises. Anti-rotation. Or a single leg deadlift would be great for that sure. too. Yep. And then one of my favorite QL movements, and it's not, I mean, it does work to QL directly, but it's not always considered a QL exercise, but still one of my favorites is a windmill. Yes. I love windmills 100%. for both stretching and strengthening um, the QL muscle. But yeah, oftentimes when I would have a client that would come in with like back pain and if it was muscular, it, you, it, off, it was, more often than not, this was the muscle that was the problem. Yeah. It was the QL. Yeah, yeah. And I think too, like some of the anti-rotational exercise, like if you want to break it down and do like a, a uh, like a, like a pointer, what do we call it? Bird dogs, like a bird dog, but you're doing that without any slight bit of rotation in the hips and really like isometrically holding that pose and, you know, getting everything to respond accordingly. Uh, a lot of times like it gets agitated because it doesn't feel supported. And then, you know, you, you emphasize that the agitation, which then you're going to feel in the QL. So, uh, 
um, you know, those things in the pale of press where we, you have the rubber band against the, the pole and, uh, you, you know, you're, you're doing the press, but also like not allowing your hips to rotate and, and your shoulders to rotate towards uh, the rubber band. Yeah, there's another way, a good way to stretch this that I find is good for people who have difficulty because when you do like a half moon or some of these standing stretches or the side bend stretches, maybe like the ones you did in, in uh, elementary school or PE or whatever. Sometimes it's hard for people to do it because they'll they'll flex in other parts of their spine because they're so tight in the QL. Yeah. So they don't really feel it. Um, I found a remedy for that, which is using a physio ball. So you can actually lay on a physio ball sideways with your legs uh, split. So you know you'll have like, imagine if I'm laying on the physio ball, my left side is on the physio ball. If I put my left leg forward and my right leg back in this kind of split position, then reach up over my head and then kind of stretch over the ball and try to relax over the ball, you'll start to feel the stretch in that in that part of the lower Actually, back. I remember a really good one that helped me a lot, which was the supine scorpion, but I would uh, place my knee on top of like a foam roll and then I would open up. So I'd have my hands, I'd lean all the way to one side. I'd have both hands together at the top and really work these T-spine drills where I'm opening up, I'm pushing my knee down to anchor my body. I'm anchoring my other hand. I'm opening up and rotating my upper body and then kind of pulling as hard as I can to the threshold. So a lot of times you're not going to be able to touch the other side. And, you know, the closer I get to that, I hold in that isometric pose, which really then, you know, helps to relieve a lot of the, the, the pain that you're going to experience. Yeah. You know, what, Doug, Doug, will you make sure you make a note? We should do a QL series and on uh, back because it is so common that this is the issue when people are, are feeling low back pain and, and don't know how to stretch it or strengthen this. So I don't know why we haven't done a series on this. This makes total sense. On it, yep. it, it does. It's a very common one. But again, uh, favorite exercise for me is windmills. I think if you – it's uh, windmills are a great way to prime your low back and body before you do pretty much any workout. You could do it with weight, but you don't even have to. You yeah. could just do it with body weight. It's a great movement to get this. That's can, why I always incorporate it. Uh, it it's a, a great prevention uh, method to, to, to prevent a lot of back issues. All right, next question is from, from Teeny Tangy. What are some habits you guys have introduced in the last year, good or bad? Hmm. I got to think about that for a second. I'll give you some, like a good one for me right now. Uh, and it's been, I guess, the last eight months. That's how old my son is. Um, I've gotten really good about getting a majority of like my, my phone, email, social media work uh, done before I come home. Hmm. And I've gotten really good about uh, putting my phone down and then just uh, that's my time, one-on-one -on -one time with him. Uh, now, obviously, in the early months, uh, some of that one-on-one -on -one time is was him just kind of like laying on my chest while I watched a TV series or just sleeping with him or whatever. Uh, but now that he's active, it's really cool. This last like probably month and a half, two months, um, he's, he's a blast and he's fun to play with right now. He's sitting up and he's very, very aware and, and interacting with me. So... Um, this has just been something that, uh, I've tried to create as a habit when I, as soon as I walk in the door, it's like I go over, I wash my hands and then I walk right up to my son and I pick him up wherever he's at. And then I'm with him for the next, that's kind of my time with him for the next two and a half hours, sometimes three or four, depending on how early I get home. Uh, and I pretty much take him over and don't let him see me on the phone or being distracted. I just give him that one-on-one -on -one time. So that's been a a good habit that I've introduced in this last year um, that I've been pretty consistent about. I mean, there's always been exceptions to the rule, uh, but for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty consistent with that on a regular basis. Yeah, I just um, started doing this on a daily basis where um, I take my kids, and it sounds silly, but uh, it made a big impact. I take my kids uh, to, on walks or I take them to the park every single day my, my, with my son, um, you know, he's a teenager and sometimes getting uh, teenagers, I guess, uh, to open up, it's kind of tough. Like if you say, you know, hey, how's school? Fine. You know, what's going on? Nothing. It's like, okay. So what I've started doing is taking them on these 30 to 30 to 60 minute walks. Mm -hmm. And as we're walking about 10 minutes in, he naturally just starts to open up and we have, you know, great conversation. And then when my daughter, I've been taking her to uh, the park. There's a park about 15 minute walk from my house. I've been taking her every single day and I've made it more of a habit. And what I mean by that is, you know, a habit, in my opinion, is something that you do when even when you don't feel like it. So like, you know, it's easy to go walk to the park when I'm totally in the mood. 
but I'm not always in the mood. Sometimes I'm tired or, or, or feeling lazy or I want to do something else. So I've just made it a thing. Like we're going to go no matter what. And we go to the park and the same thing with her. She starts to open up and talk to me about her friends and what's happening in school. And this is now something that I've done on a, on a pretty consistent basis. And it sounds silly, um, but uh, it actually made a big difference with, uh, you know, with our communication. Yeah, I'm very similar to both of you guys, I guess, in terms of like addressing a few things uh, with movement and, you know, with like kind of putting the phone away immediately when I get home. Um, but like before I even get into my truck now, because we sit so much, I have like certain practices I do to open up my hips, uh, because I, that was a real problem for me for a while. I would just feel this, this impending tightness that would start forming like a knot in my leg. And then that would travel up the kinetic chain and get all the way up into my hip and then hurt my knee. And then it's like this whole thing that I was just like constantly battling. So I've been very much more on top of addressing this before I get into my truck. I do a couple unlocking hip, uh, things, 90s, I, you know, I'll use the stick mobility moves uh, and, and a couple other like mobility drills, get in my truck, come home. And then I immediately will find usually like my youngest is playing tetherball. I'll grab him and then we'll grab the dogs and we'll go for a walk. And then just immediately just like kind of get that movement and activity uh, happening. And it always creates just a better mood of the entire house if I do that and address it right away. And then, like, you know, just hang my phone up as soon as I can, you know, so whatever I can do here and stay a little bit longer to answer questions or whatever is the better. Mm. As far as a bad habit, I, I, we've um, probably, I'd say the last, it's been about eight months, I'd say around the same time my, my son came on. We were, uh, I used to be really good on weekends of uh, our breakfast being like a, you know, eggs and bacon first thing in the morning. That was kind of how we, we did it. And if I wasn't at very active that day, I was pretty good on my calories. Uh, but Katrina has been making these incredible like protein pancakes that we've been eating for like the last, I don't know, almost year now. And they're great if I go train afterwards, you know, but they're, it's probably like a thousand calorie breakfast, uh, which is really high for me. And, you know, I'm no different than anybody else. I get, I get play the same mental games, Oh, it's protein pancakes. It's not, you know, they're healthy for me. But the reality is I know because I've measured them out before, like it's a very high calorie carbohydrate uh, breakfast. So you for, put like syrup and everything on it? Yeah, oh, yeah, too, you know. The gets, whole deal? Yeah, the whole deal. And, I, and of course, it goes good with bacon. So it's a, it's a big ass breakfast for me. And when I was competing and lifting and training hard on a very regular basis, uh, you know, my body didn't feel it. Uh, it was no big deal. In fact, it fueled these great workouts. This is another example of like how something that could that could be quote unquote a healthy or an okay choice or whatever um, is is now create become like a, a bad habit for me because I'm not moving like I, I uh, used to every single Saturday. Saturday very easily now, especially with Max not moving around very much, could be me just being on the couch and on the carpet with him and just kind of sitting around and not doing anything all day long. So. Uh, that's become a really bad habit of just that's what I love. I was loving to have every Saturday morning, and I think it attributed to me even putting on a little bit of bad weight over the last year. And so that's a, a bad habit, I think, that I, I've, I've been doing for a while now. Yeah, it's, hmm. uh, when we travel, um, our diets are always off. You know, you, you tend to eat um, eat out more and eat you know food that's fast, uh, burgers or whatever. And it's it's. I always notice when I get back, it's hard for me to break the the cycle. I tend to crave it more, and um, I've, I've let myself go on that on that path for a little for a little too long now. I would say part of the reason is because I'm enjoying the the strength that comes from the extra body weight, but I'm pushing it now a little a little too much. I, I notice almost on a daily basis, I'll have something or eat something that normally I wouldn't I wouldn't have. Isn't the best uh, mm. choice? Um, has it become a habit? Um, Probably it probably has, but uh, we'll see. We'll see about breaking that habit soon. Yeah, I was. I would say like, and this is something that I've just recently sort of addressed. But I, I saw this leading in, you know, a bad direction because I was justifying it constantly because it was like a social sexual lubricant, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol. So oh. yeah, whoa, <laughs> you got excited there for a I was second. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> What bad habits you got going yeah, on? Yeah, man. So, like, uh, it, it was almost on, like... So, have you heard oh, of Rufy? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, no. Okay, no, sorry. Sal. My yeah, bad. No. 
Um, yeah. So every weekend it was, it was kind of turning into a thing where it was like, I'm hanging out, I'm, you know, I'm de-stressing and, and we're just you know, being more social, me and my wife and, and get talking. your wife drunk so you can get laid. That's what you're doing. hundred <laughs> percent. And, uh, I'm like, okay, we got low calorie options now, honey. <laughs> White claw. Look at this. Yeah. Let's, let's be basic, you know? <laughs> and so that was kind of becoming a thing where I was like, wow, this is like, oh, we did that last weekend. We do this this weekend. And, you know, I was like, can we do this without this? You yeah. know, and like, it was a challenge because it's like, it's in order to be in the right frame of mind where you, f you don't like worry about everything else under the sun out there. Like, but you know, how, how do we cope with, with that and, and divert all that stress without having to introduce like a substance all the time. And so this, this became a conversation that we've had and we're, we're right now, we're like we're in it. Like, so my weekends are boring, dude. I'm going to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting through it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's good. It's good for us to, to nip it, you know, before it becomes a thing. You know, that's a thing for a lot of people. For a lot of people, yeah, they they have a wine every night so that they can have that loose conversation or they party every weekend with their significant other so they can feel loose or whatever. And you're you're totally right. I think it's almost like you start you 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 run the risk of develop of of building a relationship around uh, a substance. And then when you remove it, you're like, uh oh, what do we do well, now? Well, yeah. you, you hit it right on the head. And this was, it's been a while since I actually shared this hack uh, on the show. So if you've been a long time listener, you've heard me talk about this. But this, that's why um, the listening to an audiobook with Katrina was like such a game changer for our relationship. Was I noticed the same thing. You get, you get two couple, you get a couple and you're, you know, quote unquote a power couple, right? She's a hardworking business power woman. bottom. Yeah. yeah right. Oh my I'm, God. I'm a hardworking <laughs> businessman. We, we got all this stuff on our plate. We come home and you know, it's the conversations that you tend to have are, Hey, did you go to the grocery store? Hey, did you remember to take out the trash? It's all this stuff that we're always having to do. It's not this romantic, deep conversation, which typically leads to sex in a, in a relationship. And when you've been in a relationship for, you know, five, 10 plus years, like, uh, like, you know, Justin, you have, like I have right now, like sometimes it's really easy to forget about those things that, that light that spark. Yeah. And one of the things that I noticed when Katrina and I would listen to an audio book is it would give you that same distraction of all the other bullshit that's happening in the world, you know, or what we have to worry about work wise. And we'd be listening to the book and it would, it would, that's how it would start, but then it would spark this really cool, deep, a uh, very present conversation. We're listening to a, a, an audio book that then gets us talking about that thing or in that moment, which made us connect on a whole other level than the average come home from work and honey, did you remember to do this? Honey, did you do that? And, and, the, and like, that's not real communication and real talking, even though it feels like it because we are, that was a, a massive hack uh, for me. And we always, if we ever feel like we're losing connection or we're, our sex life is ever suffering or anything in that, like we know that like that's the formula to get back on that. It's like, oh, okay, we haven't been listening to our audio book together. Like tonight we're going to make that a priority. And it's nice because it, it for people in a relationship that can relate to this or going through something like this, it's not putting the pressure on, we need to go have sex because that's not, that's not fun. No, we're just going to listen to the right. book. Yeah, we're going to go listen to the book and we're just going to sit and choose something that we're both interested in. And doing that, it, it, it's crazy how that spark these deep mm -hmm. conversations, which then lead to the intimacy, which then leads to the better relationship. Next question is from Who's Saying? How and what defines a person's self image, and how do you learn to not identify your body image as your self image? Well, wow, that's a yeah. bit of a deep, uh, a deep. You know, um, years ago I heard uh, a saying, and, and I, I used it as a trainer because it was very powerful, and, and that was to not confuse your body image uh, with your self-image. So in other words, you could be objective about your body. You could look in the mirror and say, you know, right now my body is reflecting my poor uh, lifestyle. Right now my body's reflecting my bad eating habits. Um, my body's reflecting the fact that I'm not active. But that doesn't define who I am. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It just means that there's certain things that I haven't done and now you can see it on my body. And it's very different from somebody looking in the mirror saying to themselves, wow, um, I'm overweight, I'm out of shape, what an idiot I am, what mm. a terrible person I am, I don't deserve respect, I need to punish myself. Very, very different. Your self-image is how you feel about yourself um, and how you feel yourself on the whole. You know. And I like to tell people to look deeper. 
You know, okay, fine, you're 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 out of shape. And you know, it, this is the thing, by the way. Some people go too far in one direction. They they completely they lie about the body image part. No, no, no. You look fine. Say you look awesome. Say you love your you know you you love the way you look. Like you can't. You're denying people truth a little bit there. It's okay to say, yeah, I've, I'm I'm overweight. Right. Yeah, I don't look good. You are not fat, but your body has fat. Right, yeah. right. And that it's and, real feedback. Right, exactly. And that's a that's a result of a a, a lack of of movement and overconsumption. And that's that's just purely science. It, but that doesn't identify who you are as a person. You can still be amazing, brilliant, smart, beautiful. All these great these all these great attributes, and at the same time, still be allowing yourself to have an, an out of balance energy balance, right? Where mm-hmm. you are consuming more than you're expending, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and identifying and understanding that is a, a very important exercise. That. You know, and and I think that a lot of times I think I I purposely challenge my own body to do that to allow it to get skinny a little bit to put on a little bit of body fat to be jacked to go in and out and then to always try and refrain cons- or re- remain consistent with who I am as a yeah. person and just because that other people may be saying things to me like oh what happened to all your muscle or oh what's that I don't allow any of that stuff to phase me. I know who I am. I know I know that I can control that and do that anytime I want. I don't identify with being this muscular guy or not muscular guy. You just got to be okay with that because it's not who you are. But it is a reflection of what I am uh, doing or not doing to build muscle or burn body fat. Nothing and that's the honesty that. part. Like it's right. okay to be honest about that. And you know, here's a, here's the challenge. If you identify with your body that strongly where it becomes your self-image, I, you're going to be screwed no matter what because it, first off, if you're lucky, you get to live till old age and your body's going to change. There's mm-hmm. nothing you can do about it. So if your body image becomes your self-image, like a lot of, like you can look at a lot of celebrities. A lot of celebrities are like this, right? They get famous because they're beautiful. Maybe they're sex symbols. Uh, what a difficult position to be in because it's very easy to self-identify with your body when your body's what gives you all these accolades and love and all this attention. But here you are now turning 50, 60. Oh my gosh, what do I do? Tons of plastic surgery, tons of treatments, but my body's going to get older. There's nothing I can do about it. What a terrible p- position to be in. Mm-hmm. That's why you don't want to self-identify so strongly with all these things that can change. Who you are is something far deeper. Mm-hmm. It's inside. It's, you know, some people would say it's the it's the consciousness observing uh, the world around you. That's what uh, Eckhart Tolle would say. You know, religious people would say it's the spirit uh, inside of you. There's a reason why religious practices and philosophers identify these things as such. It's because it is a very uh, it's a it's a better way to live. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself uh, at odds with yourself. You're going to be find yourself battling yourself on a, on a constant basis. You know, so you want to be able to talk about yourself in that way and say to yourself, you know, it's, there's a difference between looking in the mirror and saying. I look like crap. I hate myself, mm-hmm. and I look like crap. I need to start taking care of myself. Yeah. Very, very different mentality. It's really hard because you get a lot of feedback from other people, right. and then you start really owning that feedback, and that becomes like in your mind is like this is how everybody perceives me. So this is obviously who I am as a person. I think it's just it's tough, but you got to go deeper than that. Like so, you're mentioning spiritual things. You're mentioning things of you know, really diving into like true meaning and purpose that, you know, you can find elsewhere outside of your body and like, uh, you know, whether that's like being involved more, you know, like find a community thing where you can, you know, give back where you could like immerse yourself amongst other people and like, uh, really think more outside of yourself. I think your, your internal, like a lot of times I've found with, with clients that, that get really obsessed with their body. It's like, it's it, that, that is everything. Like I'm like, okay, what else are you doing? Like what, what are the things you have going on in your life? What are, like, there's not a lot. It's like, it's very much like self-centered, uh, you know, issues wise. And it's, it's, it's hard to break out of that because it's like this, you keep feeding it all the time. Well, I also think this is a result of the, the over glorification of these extreme examples of bodies too. Mm-hmm. Right. Like we, we uh, even like my, like I'm in some of the worst, you know, uh, physical shape. If you were to compare, uh, like the aesthetics of my body today than I was in the last five years. 
but I'm extremely healthy. I'm like, uh, I have, I, I, I don't have a higher body fat percentage than probably 15% right now. I'm uh, strong. I'm mobile. I have good relationships. I have a good relationship with exercise in the gym. I'm in there about three times a week right now. I'm in a very health, but if you were to look at my body and it took a picture of me naked next to me naked five years ago in the, in the, the, you know, peak of me bodybuilding. Oh my God, I look so deconditioned and out of shape and unhealthy. It's like, no, I'm not. I, in fact, there's a good chance, especially if you count the anabolics and the things that I was doing and the stress levels that I had back then, that I actually may even technically be healthier today than I was then. But mm -hmm. because we've over glorified this extreme version of, you know, aesthetics, we, we start to identify so closely to, you know, oh, what, what you've looked like at your peak or what these people that we follow on social media look like and think like, oh, my God. And you start to identify with that when it's like, no, like learn to kind of detach from that and really be honest with yourself. Like if we do think about the other things in your life, like balance and family and relationships and mobility and overall strength and energy and sleep. Like if all those things are in check really well and your body fat percentage is three or five percent north or south of what it was before, like none of that shit doesn't even matter that much. Yeah, and, and this is what everybody else is judging and thinking about. And also consider this, um, you, you, every second you you have an opportunity to be someone different. Okay, so what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you made some really bad decisions in the past. Maybe you even were a bad person. You hurt somebody, you stole, you broke some laws, whatever. Um, that's who you were, right? Mm -hmm. You can always be someone else this second. So remind yourself of that. So even if you have a bad past, because you know we, we know ourselves better than anybody else. We know all of our deep, dark secrets and all the terrible things we may think or whatever, and all of us have that issue. Um, that's who you were. You can be someone else today. Um, and that is an empowering thought. It's also a true thought, and it can help you separate yourself from maybe the negative self-image that you had even just 10 minutes ago. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and resources. They cost nothing. They're all free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.